Oh my god. Oh my god. I cannot stop buying new puzzles. Like, it literally looks like I'm moving because I just have puzzles on every single surface of the living room. And I've been waiting to get them organized until I made this video, so I'm finally making this video. So we have a lot to go through, including a lot of very exciting puzzles right here. But first, I know that you all are dying to know what is in these giant boxes down here. Literally, look at this. This box, oh my god, this box is as big as I am. I think that I could like curl up and fit in this box myself. Okay, I'll give you a hint. There is only one puzzle in this box. So you know it has to be one of the giant ones. Okay, everyone ready? Everyone ready? So this puzzle is so giant that it literally comes with a little rolling cart. And I think down here we can just barely see that blue triangle. So it is a Ravensburger puzzle. The grand reveal. Oh my gosh, it's the Keith Haring puzzle, the 32,000 piece Keith Haring puzzle. Um, all right, now let's see if I can get this thing out of the box. Oh, oh my god. That's so heavy. <laughs> okay, I did it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this puzzle came from a viewer named Stanley who sold it to me for, I mean, a lot of money, but considering what it is, a very good price. So even though it seems like I really only have time to do one giant puzzle every year, like, it was too good of a deal. I could not pass this up. Especially since it is still shrink-wrapped, so it is in great condition. So here's what I'm still figuring out for this puzzle. Now, as you know, if you've seen any of my other giant puzzle videos, a puzzle of this size will come in different sections. So I'm pretty sure this one comes in eight sections of 4,000 pieces each. I think from photos that I've seen online, each column is its own section. And so am I going to mix any of them together? Um, am I just gonna do them all separately? The thing with this particular puzzle and why I'm a little wary of mixing them together is that if Ravensburger just repeats the exact same piece cut between the sections, so much of this puzzle is just flat, solid colors, especially the white in between. So I'd be worried that if it's the exact same piece cut, when you have the same color, that's just the solid color repeated between sections, it would just be impossible to separate them out again. So if anyone out there has done this puzzle before and can give me any insight or guidance about that, I would love to hear from you. <laughs> and no rush, because I'm probably not gonna get to this one for, I don't know, a year. I have so many other videos to make. So I'm gonna cart that one into the studio in a little bit, but first let's move on to the other giant box. <laughs> All right, here we go. This one I haven't actually opened, so I hope uh, everything's okay in there because this came in the mail a couple months ago and I have not checked to see if it is uh, undamaged or anything. Oh, those of you in the know can probably get it from just this little sliver. Oh no. Oh no. Um, okay, I think I made a mistake leaving it in the box for so long. Oh no, I wanted the reveal of when I opened it up for the camera, but uh, let's see, what's going on? What's going on? Okay, so we have all of these um, bags of pieces and it seems like they may have settled so much that this box is just fully falling apart. Um, like, look at it on 
Look at it on the bottom. This is just entirely disconnected from the bottom of the box. Okay, I'm gonna have to pull all of these bags out and uh, do a little surgery on the box, but I'm sure I can just tape that up. It's, it's fine. The pieces themselves are fine, which is the most important part. Box issues aside, yes, I have acquired the 42,000 Educa puzzle. <laughs> So this one, it seems like it goes viral, I don't know, every couple months because someone finishes it and puts in the last piece and then steps back and zooms out and everyone is like, oh my God, they make puzzles that big. <laughs> Obviously these are not the original bags. Um, actually the original bags are in here, but without the pieces in them. But uh, Bevan has already completed this puzzle and then um, basically separated out into lots of different sections in these bags. So again, I'll have to decide when the time comes um, how many of these sections I'm actually gonna mix together. All right, so two puzzles in and we already have 74,000 new pieces to add to the puzzle collection. Um, so in this box is not another giant puzzle. It is a lot of uh, regular sized puzzles. So let's go ahead and open that one up. All right, I decided to come over here in front of the Christmas tree because this is basically Christmas morning for me. So this box comes from Lamington Drive, AKA the Playgroup. They're the ones who make all of the gradient puzzles, including the 5,000 piece gradient puzzle, which I photographed for my own Karen Puzzles puzzle. So I already had most of their collection, but they emailed me and were basically like, we're so happy to have worked with you on that puzzle. Um, are there any other puzzles that you would like? And since I am a completionist, I basically just listed out all of the puzzles I have that, or I, I basically listed out all of the puzzles I don't have that they have released. And I was like, you can send me literally any of these. I'm not expecting anything. Like whatever you guys want to do is totally fine. And oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> I think they sent me every single puzzle they've ever released that I don't already have. Look at this. Oh my gosh, there are so many puzzles in here. Okay, let's go through them. So in addition to the gradient puzzles, they also have their artist series. So look at how fun that one is gonna be. Ooh, yes. Okay, this one is like a piece of modern art. It's not quite a solid white puzzle, but it's almost a solid white puzzle. Ooh, okay, I love these puzzles that are in these uh, octagon boxes. Look at how cool that is. Like, this is, like, everything they release is art, literally art. This is just such a beautiful product. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. Ooh, yes. Okay, this is so reminiscent of the like pop art puzzles that were released back in the 60s by Springbok. That's gonna be super fun. And then uh, you might be like, wait a minute, Karen, don't you have these? Isn't this literally the puzzle that reignited your love of jigsaw puzzles? And yes, but I have the original versions that they released before they started working with Ravensburger to print their puzzles. Um, they had been working with some other company and then they re-released them um, being printed by Ravensburger and they slightly redesigned the boxes. Ooh, there's also the 100 colors puzzle. Um, not totally clear if they if there was an original version of this and they re-released it or if this is it, but either way, I didn't have this one before. And then we have the new version of the halftone colors puzzle. So if you zoom in, it's basically the same gradient, but um, it's a halftone design. And then we have the same thing, but the vibrating colors puzzle. And so again, it's the same gradient, only it has an overlay of polka dots and the polka dots are in the exact opposite color from the color wheel. And so when you look at this, it's like a little hard to look at because the colors really seem to vibrate. Um, I have some really early videos on my channel if you wanna see me do all three of these puzzles, uh, the original versions, obviously not the newer ones that I just got. Okay, so that's it for this box, but then 
Um, another box from them came in the mail like a day later, so I don't know what's in this one. Ooh, okay, we have, it looks like two more puzzles. So we have another one from their Octagon series. So this one is all of these blue polka dots, super cool design. And oh, I'm so excited for this one. I can't believe I did not already own it. So this one is the round version of their Gradient series. Look at that, this is truly Christmas morning like how did I get so lucky look at how beautiful those all are together <laughs> So I was recently emailing with a viewer named Sean and he sent me photos of his vintage Springbok collection and was like, I'm looking to sell these to someone who would really appreciate them. Are you interested? And I looked at what he had and I was like, I'm the most interested I've ever been in my entire life. So we worked it out and I'm not even gonna tell you guys what I paid for all of this because it is way less than market value. Like he gave me such an incredible deal because he wasn't really looking to make a profit off of them. He just wanted them to go to someone who would really appreciate the puzzles for what they are. So I just feel so incredibly lucky and grateful that I have these puzzles in my life. So first is like the gem of the collection. These long thin boxes with um, with modern artwork on them. Like to have a collection of these four puzzles in such good condition, these four alone are worth like many times over what I paid for all of this. You might remember that I did the Pollock puzzle, which was marketed as the, the world's most difficult jigsaw puzzle. I did that pretty early on in the channel. So if you remember, these boxes are really unique because um, you have a section for the pieces and then you have a section for the poster. And a lot of the times when these show up, the poster has gone missing. But look at that, all four of them have the poster. Like this is such an incredible, incredible puzzle find. This one is actually the one that I'm like most looking forward to. Look at how beautiful that design is. Like, is that not the most me puzzle you've ever seen? And this was released in the 60s decades before I existed. <laughs> so I may have to do a video where I do all four of these. Um, should I mix up the pieces? Would that make it even more of a challenge? Or would I just like end up hating myself? <laughs> and then something else that Sean was telling me is apparently they released these a few different times. And uh, sometimes the the height of each of the boxes is a little bit different. Um, I think the other version that I have of this puzzle is actually a different version. So as a collector, I just love little details like that. And then jumping over here for a sec, you might notice um, I actually ended up with two copies of this incredibly rare puzzle. So after I made the video about the estate sale, where this is the puzzle that I missed out on, um, a viewer named Derek got in touch and um, bought one and solved it and then wanted to send it to me, which was so incredibly nice and kind. And all of that happened before Sean got in touch with me. So um, now I have two copies of it. <laughs> Okay, so originally I had filmed a clip saying that um, I was going to figure out something to do with the extra copy because I didn't really see the need of keeping two identical puzzles. However, I looked at them more closely and they're not identical. Look, this one, this um, line cuts right through the center of the top of the box and on this one it's like up here at the top third of the box. Now I just looked at all of the rest of the designs and everything else looks identical. And the Springbok Fever website doesn't say anything about multiple editions of this puzzle, so I'm not sure why I have two different copies. Anyway, moving on to this stack. So would you look at this? Would you look at this? 
Basically, when I saw this in Sean's collection, I was like, that one alone makes the entire thing worth it. Yes, this is Floating Spectrum. Um, again, this is another one that I missed out on during that estate sale, and it is the cardboard version. So I already had the wooden version, and now I have the cardboard version to go along with it. It's complete. Um, the box is in kind of rough shape, but that's totally fine. I am just so, so excited that I have this in my collection. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump past the next one in the stack because this is another one that has been on my list for so long. This one is Carousel Mind Flowers. Look at how beautiful that illustration is. And just look at that. Look at how vibrant the colors are, how fun that illustration is. I literally hit the jackpot. Sean is the official hero of this channel. So next we've got Strike One, which is all of these match tops. Um, that's gonna be really fun. This one is actually still sealed. So this one is double acrostic and it is a, uh, oh, it's actually, wait a minute. I just kind of glanced at this one and I thought it was a uh, crossword puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, but it's, it's actually an acrostic jigsaw puzzle. I had no idea. I literally had no idea until this very second. I do the acrostic. They release a new one on the New York Times crossword site every two weeks. I do it every two weeks. I love the acrostic. I'm so happy. I had no idea. Okay, the next one is... Uh... Undersea Enchantment. We also have Pipe Dream. Oh, it's tobacco pipes, I see, okay. So you have all these tobacco pipes in the center and then you have various designs, I guess, relating to tobacco pipes surrounding that. Ooh, this one's gonna be super fun. Okay, this one is the Puzzle of the Universe. And look at that, it's like a star chart. Oh, I love this one so much. And then this one I'm not uh, quite as excited about. Um, this one is a thousand piece puzzle called Arabian Stallion. You guys know I don't really like nature photos like this, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one. So moving on to the next stack, we have about a million marbles, just kind of a Pretty standard marble design. Um, again, a nature photo. I'm not quite as excited about this one. It's called Song of the Island. Ooh, this one is beautiful. Okay, I'm very excited about this one. So this one is Pennsylvania Dutch Hex Signs. Look at that. Super colorful, super graphic, an octagon puzzle. This is everything I love in a jigsaw puzzle. Then we have another fish puzzle. This one is called Rush Hour. Ooh, okay, this one is really nice. I love a good sort of graphic illustration. Uh, this one does not have quite as many colors. This one's called Time Pieces. And then we have St. Basil's Cathedral. Uh, and then there's also this little guy. So this, oh, this is only 350 pieces. But then, <laughs> okay, again, this is such an incredible collection to get all in one go because he had all four of the Springbok bookcase photo, or book, bookcase puzzles. So you can see it says that right there and you can see from the side, it literally just looks like a book. And then look at how cool this box design is. So you open it up and you have these two little puzzle boxes which are glued inside and then you have all the pieces in there i just think this design is so interesting like nobody's making stuff like this anymore so look at that look at all those springbok pieces so it's like a little hidden um puzzle but you can put it on your bookcase and it literally just looks like a book. So I'm not gonna lie, the images in this series are not the most interesting. So there's one and then there's the other. But I have had all four of these puzzles on my wish list for so long, just because I think the box design is 
so interesting and I can't believe I finally have them. Like when I first heard about these, all I could find was a like very low quality old eBay image. Eventually I figured out what to search for and I found better images, but the fact that they're now like right in front of me and I can see every single detail. Oh, I'm just so happy. I can't wait to do these. And then finally, Sean also just threw in a couple of the minis, which as I said before um, in the estate sale video, I don't really collect the minis just because there are so many and it's like just another avenue to go down that I haven't really delved into yet. But um, you know, I'm starting my collection and I actually have another few um, in another group of puzzles that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Oh my God, get on there. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that was the Sean haul. Literally the most incredible puzzle haul of my entire life. So next I have a handful of boxes to go through of just modern puzzle brands. Um, I think I might bring these back over to the Christmas tree though. All right, so first is actually uh, one that I just bought from eBay with my own money. I can't believe it. I can't believe I finally found one. So this is the Pop Chart Lab Puzzle, a visual compendium of typewriters. So I have talked about these puzzles a little bit here on the channel. Um, I have the cameras one, which I bought when it was first released. And then they had also released two other puzzles, the typewriters one and one other that I'm totally blanking on. And I had actually bought this one when it was first released as well, but I had done a giveaway with it. And so I obviously didn't have it anymore. And then they very quickly stopped making these. It was a very limited product. And then you just could not find them anywhere. Like I have had a eBay alert set up for Pop Chart Lab puzzle for over a year now. And almost every day the space puzzle shows up. That one was released with uh, Penguin. So it was much, much more common. The ones that were released by Pop Chart Lab themselves, like th those just never show up. So as soon as this one showed up, I was like, that's mine. I'm the only person in the world looking for them. That is mine. <laughs> so next up, we've got this box. And the problem with taping over the addresses is that I have no idea who any of these are from anymore. So we're gonna find out. Uh, this is from Puzzle Weekend. What did they send me? I don't even remember. Oh, this is from, this is from Tanya Wicks. Okay, I remember now. So I've talked about Tanya Wicks on here a little bit before. She is an Australian photographer who has started releasing puzzles and she offered to send me a few from her new collection. So this one is called Candlesticks and then this one is called Envelopes. Next up, we've got what I can only assume is another puzzle package. Oh, oh wait, how do I even get into this one? Where does the box open? This one is literally a puzzle of just getting into the puzzle box. <laughs> All right, I know what this is. So this is gonna be two more puzzles from Soonness. Look at that. So this one is called Big Restaurant and there is the full artwork. And then here is the other one. So this one is called Girl's Room and there is the artwork. So she has started working with independent artists and I just love that. Like each one is super unique. And then we've got this box and I can tell from the bumper sticker that this one is gonna be from Les Puzz. Ooh, well first we have a handwritten note. That's always so nice. And ooh, ooh, that's so fun. Look at that. So this one is this like paint splatter, paint, like super messy paint design. Um, it is a thousand pieces and here's what the back of the box looks like. Here's the side. Every single thing about their puzzles is just so, so beautifully designed. Oh, I can't wait to do this one. And then we have um, one more box. However, in this box, it's a puzzle 
so rare, a vintage puzzle, so rare. I didn't even know it existed. And the story of me getting my hands on it is kind of a good story. So I actually think, <laughs> I'm so sorry to do this to you. I think I'm gonna wait and opening up this box and solving that puzzle will be the first video of the new year. So you guys can just think on that of what you think could possibly be in here. Although actually, okay, if you really can't wait, I'm gonna put up an exclusive video on Patreon showing me opening up the box for the first time. You can sign up for Patreon for $3 a month and get all kinds of exclusive videos from me. Or, you know, you can just hang tight until the new year and then I'll give you the full story of what is inside this mysterious box. All right, we are almost done, but I have just a couple more um, miscellaneous puzzles to show you. So I've recently started going to puzzle swaps, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, a bunch of people just get together in a parking lot on a specific morning and pop their trunks and they just have lots of puzzles that they want to trade. So I've been to two so far. In this deck are all the puzzles I got at the November swap and then these are the three that I got just the other day at the December swap. So I picked up this puzzle <laughs> which I actually think uh, came from Tammy and this was on the table of puzzles where if nobody takes them within I don't know how long, a couple months, uh, they just get rid of them. So I think I grabbed this one just in time. I have no idea if I'm gonna um, ever do this one on the channel, but you guys know that I love my unique puzzles. So another clear puzzle will just fit right in with the collection. This one I grabbed just because I thought this foil effect was kind of interesting. Honestly, I have so many puzzles to do now, I might just bring this one back without actually having solved it. <laughs> uh, this one, again, came from Tammy. So a guy named David Kwong put together this show called The Enigmatist. Uh, my sister and I went to see it when he was doing it here in LA and the entire thing is like puzzle themed and there's a big crossword puzzle that's a big part of the show. And the first time they did it, I think just in New York, they released this puzzle to go along with it, which shows the entire set. And if this design looks familiar, it was uh, released along with piecework. To be honest, the puzzle design itself is a little uh, dark and maybe not the most fun puzzle in the world, but just the fact that um, Tammy had this puzzle from this show that I had seen and it was released by piecework whose puzzles i already collect i was like that's perfect i will absolutely take that from you so these two puzzles i have already solved um this one i did a whole patreon video about and then this one i just put up an instagram post about so i might just bring those back to the puzzle swap now and then i grabbed another bits and pieces puzzle because these are the ones that I like grew up doing. I love these illustrations. It just feels so vintage and homey. And then usually there aren't a lot of actual uh, vintage puzzles at these swaps, but this one is an Eaton puzzle. And so as soon as I saw that, I was like, I don't even care what the picture is. I will absolutely take it. So. It's, it's not the greatest picture in the world, but I just think these vintage Eaton puzzles are so interesting. And then for the December one, I brought six puzzles and I came home with three puzzles. So I think that's uh, pretty good for me. <laughs> okay, so this one, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I need that. I need that. <laughs> I love the Jane Wister Scott folk art illustrations. Again, these are like the puzzles I grew up doing and it's a 1500 piece puzzle. So it's just gonna be so, so fun. There's actually a 6,000 piece version of one of her illustrations, which is on my wish list, but uh, it hardly ever shows up on eBay. And when it does, it's super expensive. So someday I'll get that one. And then uh, Tammy had actually brought this Eboo puzzle 
Uh, and this is an Ibu design I have not done yet. And this is also their old box design. Like from when they first started releasing puzzles, you can tell um, that the box design is different and it still says 1,008 pieces. <laughs> because at the time uh, they did not know that most puzzles are slightly over a thousand pieces, but most companies just round to a thousand. And then this one is a 1500 piece Ravensburger. We are going to see if I have time to do this one. If the next swap comes around and I haven't done it yet, I might just bring it back with me. I have so many puzzles to do. And then I've got a couple more puzzles here in this stack. So this one is actually on loan from Cami. Now that I've made puzzle friends here in the area, we can all just loan puzzles back and forth and it's really great. So I've never done a Liberty puzzle before. This is a wooden puzzle and everyone says they are just the most incredible puzzles in the world. Look at that. It's made out of actual wood, not like, oh, I already dropped a piece. Not like MDF or anything. You can literally see the burns from where they laser cut these out. And they have a ton, a ton of whimsy pieces. Also on loan from Cami is a puzzle twist puzzle. The thing with these is that the picture is a little bit different from the puzzle picture. The reason why I have this is because I might be preparing for a certain um, very chilly puzzle contest. More info to come about that. And then I have two more puzzles from Wright Kitchen. So this is a photographer named Brittany Wright. Um, she had sent these to me literally like two months ago now, and I had opened the box before I decided to do this haul video. But we've got this flower design, and we have this rainbow of vegetables, fruits and vegetables. Ooh, okay, I just double checked. I have to admit that the first puzzle I did from her, I didn't love the piece cut. I thought the piece quality was not great, but I think she's using a different manufacturer because these do not look like the pieces for the one I already did by her. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna give her a second try. I'm really excited for these. And you thought we were done. Oh no, we are not done. So I have a whole nother batch of puzzles. This is everything that I got when I was at Nationals. Okay, I already did a whole short going through the swag bag, so I'm not gonna go through these again. Um, I also did a short literally doing this entire puzzle. Uh, they also gave me this coffee mug that says Jigsaw Puzzle Association. Oh, this was not from Nationals, but a while ago I got um, another package from Le Puz where they sent me their sticker collection. So all of these vintage puzzles actually come from a viewer named Ara who uh, offered to sell them to me. And this one is called Treasure Hunt. It is an old Springbok puzzle. I just loved this image. Look at how bright and colorful that is. I'm very excited for this one. And then she also just threw in all of these minis. So again, the minis are not my most sought after item, but you know, I'm just slowly starting to build that collection. This guy, I'm not gonna open the whole thing, but when I was at Nationals, Ravensburger surprised me by having my puzzle image printed on this fabric backdrop and they let me take it home. So someday I'll have enough space to have it up on display somewhere. Okay, now these you guys are gonna be so excited about. Um, these came from Marie, who was there with a company called Bandai Namco. And I think what they do is they import all of these uh, Japanese puzzles. Literally, when I saw that all of this was Studio Ghibli, I was like, my real life friends do not care about puzzles. These are the only puzzles in the world they're gonna care about. <laughs> and I liter like literally, we were on a call the other night and they were so excited about all of these. So this one I actually already solved. This is a 3D puzzle and uh, it basically just creates this little figure of Totoro. So in the back, you can see that's where the puzzle is. All of these different sections 
uh, come apart and you have to piece them together. So my friend Rob has already claimed this one. So then we have two of these mini art crystal jigsaws. So these are only 126 pieces and I actually already did this one. So look at that. It lit like these pieces are made of plastic and they're translucent. So you can literally see through it as if it really is stained glass. Look at how cool that is. And something about the feeling of putting in these plastic pieces. I don't know how well that'll translate, but it just feels so satisfying. This is true, truly like oddly satisfying content. So in addition to the mini ones, there's also this one, which is 300 pieces. And then there's the big guy, which is a thousand pieces. And even if I'm not the biggest Ghibli fan, I'm still super excited to do this one because these pieces are just so, so satisfying to put together. And then there's two more. So these aren't puzzles. They're a basically like a paper craft project. So you get all of this cardstock that's already been punched out to the exact shapes, and then you glue them together and layer them inside of this plastic ball. And then you get uh, this little scene from one of the movies. And then finally, we are nearing the end. So as I said in my Nationals video, um, Masterpieces was at the event and they literally made this custom puzzle just for me. One of their employees made this illustration and they got it printed into a puzzle. This is just such a special gift. I'm like, I don't even know what to say. That's just so nice. I also brought home one of the Ravensburger sprint puzzles because I have an idea for something I might be doing with uh, some smaller piece count puzzles. Um, we're gonna see if that project ends up happening or not. <laughs> I have a lot of projects on my plate. And then finally, this puzzle twist puzzle was uh, designed just for nationals. They had a contest to design a puzzle for them. And so a lot of people are timing themselves and they had um, some kind of contest to see who could do it the fastest. So I've been waiting to do this one until I can actually time myself so that I can see how I compare to all the other puzzlers. And this illustration is by Robin, who uh, you saw in my nationals video. She did so well at the competition. Oh my god, my apartment is a total disaster now. Let's get all of these puzzles into the studio so that they can at least all be in one place and I can get rid of all the cardboard. Sorry neighbors, um, I'm gonna be filling up the recycling this week. <laughs> um, guys, I think I have a problem. Um, okay, so I'm definitely gonna have to do a little reorganizing to make space for all of these puzzles. I'm having such deja vu to the last haul video I did. And I'm like, where, where could I possibly put all of these? I think for now, I'm just gonna leave them out on the table like this. And then when I get back after the holidays, I'm gonna have to completely reorganize this room again. Ah. Uh. 
All right, so this is my final video of the year. Once this is up, I am officially on Christmas vacation. And before I go, I just wanna say a huge, huge thank you to every single person who watched and subscribed and commented. This was my first year doing Karen puzzles full time. It was just like a huge experiment because I had no idea if this would be able to like sustain me without an extra job on the side. But things are going like better than I ever could have imagined. I just passed 200,000 followers. I was in the Guinness Book of World Records. I won second place at the national championships. I got so many millions of views on my channel this year. So never fear, I will be back in January for another year of puzzle videos. My list of videos to make is a mile long. Like, don't worry, there are more videos coming. So I'm gonna go break down all of those cardboard boxes and finally, finally get my living room back. Um, let me know in the comments which of everything I showed, what would you be most excited to see in a video? And what is your guess for that mystery rare puzzle that I haven't opened yet? All right, thank you again for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. And I will see you all in the new year.